Okay, um, I'll start my presentation. Um, the title of my presentation is From Rookie to Pro, um, Unleashing Your Cybersecurity Powers. Um, it sounds badass, but my presentation isn't going to be technical. It's um, more of a story-like presentation uh, with some real-life examples on how I pretty much started the cybersecurity career and why I am here today. Uh, so just some things about me. I work at Viris. I am a penetration tester, consultant. I am also the team lead, and in my free time, I am a CTF player. Uh, the presentation is going to be like in two parts. Uh, first is my story, how it started. Um, it kind of sounds like uh, I was in the right place at the right time, um, though the story has a lot of hidden meaning and hidden uh, hints on uh, how to start in cybersecurity, and we will dissect them in the second part. Uh, and I hope you get some guidelines from this presentation. Okay, um, in my childhood, the early stages, I was very curious. I was curious how things worked, how everything is connected to, to each other, and uh, I was pretty much like that uh, kid in the photo. Uh, every piece of technology that uh, broke in our house, I took it apart, I looked what's inside and how, how things are working. Um, and then uh, later in high school, I kind of became a rebel. I, I was an activist, and in my free time, when I was not playing video games, I started going on different messaging boards, on different uh, IRC channels, and I started talking to like-minded people who are also kind of activists and doing the same things that I was doing. Uh, but this is also the first time that I got in contact with hackers. Uh, they were anonymous hackers uh, from the group Anonymous, uh, and they were what is called uh, hacktivists. They combined the activism part with hacking. So they hacked big corporations and companies and banks to kind of prove their point, to get across the message and to um, show what they believe in. Um, and when the news broke out about these hackers being arrested, uh, it was very interesting because they were mostly young people. So uh, in the UK, one anonymous hacker was arrested. He was 16 years old. And this means that they were also kind of the same group, uh, same age group as I was. And they uh, shared the same experiences. Um, and why do you think those like young kids, 16, 17, 18 year old uh, people were hacking the big corporation and banks? The fame, fame wasn't one part because they were under the group anonymous. They didn't get really any fame out of it. Uh, money also wasn't the main, uh, main uh, goal for them. Um, they were mostly doing it for the adrenaline rush. There are a lot of interviews with those hackers and all of them were doing it to, to get the adrenaline rush to hack something just because you can hack it. Uh, they were doing it um, to feel a, get a feeling of power, this God complex that a 16-year-old can buy, hack the biggest bank in the world, for example. Um, and throughout my high school years, I had a front row ticket to all the hacking. I was inside those uh, messaging boards and I was kind of looking at what they were doing. Uh, the thing is that I wasn't doing anything of the hacking, not because I didn't want to, but because I didn't know how to. Uh, back then, I really had no place to learn anything about hacking, because back then, hackers had this bad stigma around them, uh, that um, they are the bad guys, and if you try to learn anything about hacking, you pretty much got some YouTube videos which were kind of illegal in the first place. Um, so I started looking around and trying to learn more, and I noticed an um, event going on. It's called Frisk in Murska Sobota, and there was one guest speaker who was an ethical hacker. I skipped a few classes to watch him uh, make the talk, and um, 
it was interesting because he was a hacker. He was doing uh, things that the real hackers were doing. But he uh, two things really stood out in that talk. The first one is that he said that they hackers have ethical hackers have a license to kill. This pretty much means that they are allowed to do illegal things on a legal way. You have a contract with the with the company. You're allowed to hack them and. Uh, this is what makes the difference between the good guys and the bad guys. And the other thing was, he was asked why he isn't a black hat hacker, because realistically, the bad guys are making way more money. If you hack a bank, a company, you get a lot of personal information. You can sell that on the black market and get a lot of money. And he said that he can sleep at night. He can sleep at night uh, because he's not afraid to get raided by the police or to upset some bad guys who come after him. So this is kind of where um, I started thinking differently. I, I was motivated to become a hacker and um, I attended school. Uh, um, I started studying computer science in Ferry, uh, in Maribor. And uh, there we also were organizing a LAN party. And this LAN party is the LAN party to change it all because I met that ethical hacker in person. He brought his son to the LAN party, um, and I went to him and started speaking to him, which is kind of not mm, really typical for me because I don't talk to random people <laughs> that often, uh, but I kind of had this feeling that I have to talk to him. Uh, we started talking, he asked me what I was doing. At the time, I was a web developer uh, and mobile developer front-end. Um, and then he asked me what I want to be doing, and I said that I want to be a hacker. He told me to come to his offices um, for an interview. I told him that I have no real experience. I just read about things. Uh, I, I watched how they were hacking, but I never really hacked anything. Um, but he still offered me a job. Uh, I got a job as a consultant, and he put himself in the role of the mentor. So. Pretty much everything he knew, uh, all the knowledge, all the information he put into me, and I learned as much as possible from him. And now we come to the second part. This is kind of my story, how I started. And at the time, I was a rookie in the industry. I had to learn a lot of things on my own. I had to learn a lot of things uh, on, the, on, uh, on the hard way, and uh, I still learn new things every day. And here in the second part, I will give you some real life examples on how some penetration tests are going and what is important in this field. So the cybersecurity field, it's a very broad field. You really have a lot of different paths that you can take. And traditionally, the cybersecurity field is divided into two subsections. Does anyone know the two subsections? Yes, exactly. So you have the blue team and you have the red team. Uh, the blue teams are the defenders and the red teams are the attackers. Uh, the thing is that the blue team and the red team should be working together. They, in the end, share the same goal. The goal is to make system more secure, to, to prevent uh, breaches and hacks from happening, and they uh, should be working together. But that's not really often the case because on some penetration tests that we do, we always in the end ask uh, if they saw something and we start this dialogue. Uh, and often the, the customers are getting very defensive about, um, about themselves. They take the hack, the penetration test personally. They think that we are attacking them personally, that they did something wrong. But that's not the case. We are trying to help them. Um, and. Um, on the other hand, you have then some cases where we went on a penetration test and the, the blue team, which was one guy uh, for the whole company, uh, had pretty much everything under control. He, he saw everything that we were doing. He, the, he uh, pretty much had trip wires, alert, alerting systems, uh, uh, defensive systems everywhere. We couldn't really do anything and, the, and the, the, at the end. We sat down together, he showed us a table by the minute, like 
1437, you opened this file, then you went there, and he pretty much had everything uh, noted. And we started talking, we started uh, brainstorming, we showed him how we, we did something, and he learned something from us, and we learned also a lot from him. Um, then in the cybersecurity field, you have a lot of subcategories. Um, in the blue team, you, ha you can be like a SOC analyst, you can be a threat hunter, you can be an incidence response person. And on the red team, you have penetration testing, which also has a lot of subcategories. You can test web applications, IoT, mobile applications, internal network applications. You also have social engineering, for example. Um, there is one case when we were doing a social engineering um, attack. Um, it was a physical social engineering, so which means that we were driving around Slovenia uh, to the offices of the customer, and we tried to go come inside the server rooms, inside their offices without any authorization. And I was surprised that we got into every one of their offices. Uh, I went there, I said that headquarters sent me that they noticed that their internet has a bad connection, that I am doing some testing, and they all said, yeah, go ahead, there is the server room. And I was left in one case. The guy gave me the keys to the server room and to the whole office, which means that I was alone there with the servers, with the bulletproof OS, with weapons, with whatever they had there. And... Um, the other case, which was kind of funny, is that uh, one woman that was, the one employee that was with me in the office, was like, this is like from the movies, where hackers come to the office and they hack your systems. Should I call headquarters? And I was like, I mean, sure, you can, but I'm a good guy. I'm just doing some testing, and I will be out of your hair in a few minutes. And she was like, okay, and that was it. And uh, it's really amazing to see like those kind of penetration tests, uh, which are special in my opinion, at least. Um, but even the blue team and also the red team, they all share one thing that I want to highlight uh, for you if you want to pursue a career in cybersecurity is reporting. Why I want to highlight is it is because it's very important because this is the final product that you give the customer. So all the hacking you do, you can hack the whole system. If you don't present a good report, a well-written report with proof of concept, with uh, no mistakes, because if you make one mistake, then you discredit the whole report. Um, and this is the, your final product. And so hacking, in my experience, is like 40 to 50 percent, and then reporting is the other 50 percent, which is not that great in terms of uh, what you want to do, but it's very important in the end to really present the customer with a great report. Um, next, I want to talk about skills that are useful in cybersecurity. Um, first, you have technical skills. Those Anyone have any idea what technical skills can be useful in cybersecurity? Yes? <laughs> yeah, programming, um, so networking, how things are connected to each other, how, how packets are being sent with, from one machine to the other, system administ administration, for example, operating system, uh, systems, basically anything uh, that you know from technology can be useful later with being a cybersecurity professional. The other thing is analytic skills. Um, blue teams especially, and also red teams, are dealing with large amounts of data. We are talking about terabytes of data. Uh, and you really have to uh, be um, analytical. You have to identify patterns, trends, anomalies, and uh, kind of find what is sticking out. For example, we were doing a incidence response. Uh, a website in Slovenia was hacked. They uh, did a SQL injection attack, and most of the um, IPs were like VPNs uh, all over the world. But when doing the analysis, we found the very first request that they sent, the attacker sent one tick where they tried the SQL injection. And the same identical request was sent from two different IPs. The first one was from a Slovenian IP, and then from a Netherlands like VPN. What the attacker was doing, he was browsing the website, tried to attack it, tried to ask an injection. He saw that it is working, 
hopped on a VPN and started the attack with SQL map. But this first request gave him away. And this is why you really have to find the needle in the haystack pretty much with, uh, with uh, your an uh, analytical skills. Um, then we have communication skills. Uh, in computer science and generally, yeah, generally computer science, uh, most of us are kind of asocial. We are uh, geeks and nerds who know our way with the computer, but we don't really know how to talk with each other. But um, if you want to be a successful um, cybersecurity professional, you have to have great communication skills because in the end you have to know how to talk to the customer, you have to present your findings, you have to um, communicate with other teams, with, other, uh, with your clients, and um, this is also very important. Then we have problem, problem solving skills. So CTFs, you are all doing CTFs today. CTFs are a great way to kind of train those problem solving skills um, uh, because it's a lot about finding different uh, point of views on one, uh, one, uh, one problem and you sometimes have to improvise. Uh, I remember one, one penetration test where we couldn't move anywhere because it was kind of locked down, but all the computers in their internal network were connected over their stationary phone. So every employee had a stationary phone and the computer was connected to that stationary phone and then went into their internal network. So we tried to hack that stationary phone, but the phone had like a six digit password for admin access. And if you typed it in five times incorrectly, it would lock for five minutes. The thing is that the customer was quite large and we could identify a few hundred of those phones. So we wrote a script that tried five times on this phone, then went to the other phone to try it five times here, and it basically rotated. So the first phone that you tried was already unlocked by the time you made a full circle. And we managed to, um, managed to brute force the admin password for the phone. We logged in, we found some log files, we stored credentials and could gain additional access. So this improvisation is very important because it is some, sometimes you can learn things, but sometimes you have to like be very fast and uh, um, improvise right on the spot. Um, and then the continuous learning. This is also a very important skill. Um, because the whole cybersecurity uh, field is like a very dynamically developing, developing uh, cat and mouse game. The attackers are hacking something, the blue teams are fixing it, they find a new vulnerability. So you really have to be on top of your game and really um, follow what is happening in the community and, uh, and not, not fall asleep, basically. Um, I remember one penetration test uh, in the morning. We, we went to a customer internal penetration test and the night before in USA, uh, a major security issue was released, a white paper how everything was working. It was the Windows Active Directory Certificate Services vulnerability. And while we were driving to the customer, two hours, it was a long drive. Me and my coworker were on analyzing or learning what, um, what the vulnerability is, and until we came to the customer, we had a proof of concept, and they had kind of a lockdown system, but we actually managed to hack them because of that issue, because they didn't have time to fix it, but we already learned how to exploit it. So the continuous learning is very important. But the most important skill, in my opinion, and those, all, all of this you can pretty much learn, and we will get to that later. But the most important thing in cybersecurity is the right mindset. Um, this means you have to be eager to learn new things, you have to be motivated, uh, you have to know how to think outside of the box, which is a lot of times what hackers are doing, and you have to have the mentality of try harder. Oftentimes you're doing some challenges, some CTFs, and you ask for hints, and the other guy tells you, try harder. Well, thank you. But it's actually a good advice, because a lot of times people are trying, and they give up, they move on, but if you try harder, then you really can push forward and be better than everyone else. So this is the, the most important thing in, if you want to pursue a career in cybersecurity. 
Okay, the resources. Um, the industry is in need of professionals because the attackers are not going to going anywhere. Uh, projections show that attacks are actually going to be uh, more intense and even more attacks are coming our way. So we really need uh, a lot of uh, cybersecurity professionals and uh, you have a lot of resources where you can learn those things for free even. Um, you have some blogs, YouTube videos, podcasts, but the problem with these three is that it's passive. So you're reading about it, you're watching, you're listening even, you're not trying it. And uh, hacking is very hands-on. Um, when, as I said in my story at the start, I didn't really know where to learn things because at the time there wasn't any sites like this, like Hack the Box or Try Hack Me, where you can learn hacking. But now you have those sites. And Hack the Box, for example, is offering not only CTF-style uh, machines, but also challenges. They offer labs, which are uh, like whole business environments with Active Directory, Windows system servers, where you can try different tools. And, um, and uh, they also have Hack the Box Academy, for example, one of my co-workers really did a lot of time on Hack the Box Academy and it's, uh, it's, we see progress there and um, it's, uh, it's a great place to learn because not only do you get the uh, theory, but you also try like hands-on on a virtual machine. You try all the tools, all the commands and uh, you can really learn uh, from hands-on experience because you can't really go around and hack random sites because that's illegal, so you should really use these, um, these uh, platforms. And one thing I also want to touch here is certificates. So in the cybersecurity world, we have a lot of certificates, but if you're a beginner, I wouldn't really recommend going for any of those certificates because first of all, they are very pricey. We are talking from few dollars to few thousand dollars. Uh, the second thing is there are a lot of scam certificates. Scam meaning that you don't, I mean, you get a certificate at the end which is pretty much worthless in our industry. So if you want to get certificates, make a, your research, um, look for certificates that are uh, a knowledge in the community, maybe even go on job postings on LinkedIn and see what they're looking for and look for those certificates. Um, here by the resources, I also want to um, um, talk about our new blog. Um, here is a QR code you can scan or just go to virus.si slash blog uh, because uh, a coworker wrote a blog post which is a multi-part blog post um, where it is basically described the same thing that I am talking about today. It's a bit more in detail. Uh, about how to start uh, in the cybersecurity world, um, where to start, some hints, and uh, how to really, really get your, um, yourself into it. Um, and the last thing I want, to, uh, I want to point out is networking. It's not computer networking, it's people networking, human networking, making connections. Um, I recommend that you visit as many uh, events, as many... Um, um, talks as possible because not only are you uh, you get an idea what other people are doing, you also maybe get new ideas uh, or you make connections that may be useful in the future. I remember one time we were doing a penetration test on IoT systems and we were kind of stuck but then remember that on one conference we met some guys that were doing research on specifically that kind of protocol that the IoT device was using. So we hit them up over the Twitter, they sent us their whole research and we could make progress because that one connection. So connections are very, very important. And here are some notable events. Um, I want to say, I want to talk about the B-sides that we are organizing on 16th of June uh, this year after three years, I think. Uh, it is in Ljubljana in the museum, the Computer History Museum. Um, we have some international speakers uh, and we also have a CTF plant. I think it's not going to be a 
typical CTF, like off the shelf, but attack and defense CTF, which means that you will attack other competitors, uh, other, uh, other uh, people on that CTF, and also defend your system from being attacked. So it's kind of a different, uh, a different, um, a different type of CTF. Then the ECSC, the European Cybersecurity Challenge, which is also a great start if you're a student or a university or high school, because here you are, uh, you are uh, representing your country, you are uh, doing research and uh, competing in uh, CTFs uh, against other countries, and it's a great place to learn because uh, the organizers also prepare a lot of talks, a lot of workshops where you also get a lot of hands-on experience. Uh, then maybe two of the biggest conferences in the world, in Europe we have the BrewCon, which is in Brussels, and then you have the DEF CON in Las Vegas, which is the biggest hacking conference in the world, but I don't know if it's canceled this year. Um, and then I also want to, um, say about um, DragonSec uh, CTF and the DragonSec uh, events. It's really great that you're organizing this today and um, that you're giving back to the community and building a community together is very important and it's a great event and thank you for letting me speak here. And um, now just a quick summary. So in my opinion, um, what is important is to chase the high so that adrenaline rush, that um, feeling of power you get when you solve a challenge, when you hack something, use that for the good, not for the bad. Um, you, because I myself still get a, an adrenaline rush whenever I hack a web, web application or uh, a domain or pretty much whatever. Um, then the right mindset is the most important thing because you can learn pretty much everything on the internet, even for free, but having the right mindset, being eager and willing to learn all of that is the most important step, because if you don't know, have that, if I didn't want to learn when I got my, when I got uh, my job offered, I wouldn't get it, because I didn't have I didn't have no experience, but because I was willing to learn, because I was uh, eager to, to explore the hacking world, uh, it was all that was needed. Um, then I recommend that you should test the waters. As I said, the cybersecurity field has a lot of different paths for you to take. Maybe try uh, a few of them to get a feeling what you want to be doing. Because at the start, for example, because I was a web developer before being a hacker, I started with web application penetration testing. Because this is the field where I was most comfortable. I, I knew how web applications were designed, I knew where developers make mistakes, and it was something that I could use for my advantage. So if, if you have a field that you're more, more comfortable in, maybe export that first. Um, then the resources, you have all the resources that you can get. Uh, it's just that you need to explore them. And in my opinion, also very important networking, go to the events, meet new people, talk to them, and uh, get new opportunities in your career. Are there any questions? Yes? Where for, for me, it's internal penetration testing, so hacking domains, hacking um, internal networks, because it's very dynamic. Uh, a lot of companies, there are a lot of guidelines that companies should follow, but until you come to the customer and uh, plug yourself into their network, you won't know what is coming to for you. There are always some new challenges, some new uh, new flaws, new vulnerabilities what, that, we find on e, that we find on each penetration test, and this is the field that is most interesting to me. Um, and as I said, you also have to be very creative and improvise on those, um, those types of uh, penetration tests. Also social engineering. This is also very fun. <laughs> One of my coworkers was also like phoning people and asking about asking about their systems, uh, like what kind of 
antivirus that they have, what kind of operating systems they're using, because we could then leverage that to create a payload that would execute on their specific computers. And those kinds of, uh, those kinds of penetration tests or social engineering attacks are very fun because it's like, a different, a whole different path. It's also some other, other, um, other uh, categories in there like uh, psychology and things like that, so yeah. Okay, thank you for your attention. <laughs>